Good evening, I'm Prasad Michael, and you're watching Kini News, the show that brings you today's biggest stories. Infighting in Pakatan Harapan has left Warisan MPs feeling frustrated. In fact, now it appears they're looking for a new face to lead the opposition. Warisan lawmakers were absent from today's block vote in the Dewan Rakyat, and one MP told Malaysia Kini reporter Annabelle Lee that the move was deliberate to show their frustration at opposition leader Anwar Ibrahim. This comes after Anwar sent last-minute instructions to opposition lawmakers during last week's Budget 2021 policy stage vote, which led to most opposition MPs from PKR and DAP remaining seated. According to Labuan MP Rosman Isli, Walisa now wants a new leadership to helm the opposition front. Earlier today, the budget allocation for both the Prime Minister's Department and the Finance Ministry were passed at the committee stage. While both benches recorded absentees, Warisan was notably absent, with all eight of his MPs not in the House. Speaking to Malaysia Kini, Rosman said he and his party colleagues were all in the capital, but had decided to skip the vote to send a signal to Pakatan Harapan. He added that Warisan representatives will continue to sit out block votes. Rosman said Warisan leaders are upset at the persistent infighting that had cost Harapan the federal government. They are also particularly frustrated at Anwar over the last-minute instruction issued last week. Harapan shocked many Malaysians as well as its own party members last week when they largely refused to support a motion to initiate a block vote during the first stage of the passage of the Supply Budget Bill 2021. Without the support of Warisan MPs and with several other MPs absent, Anwar Ibrahim did not have the numbers to defeat PN in two block votes at the committee stage today. The supply bill for Budget 2021 has inched closer to passage in the Dewan Rakyat with the passing of the budget for two ministries at the committee stage. The first round of voting for the Prime Minister's Department took place at about 2.30pm today. Keputusan undian adalah seperti berikut. Tidak hadir 20. Point of order. Tidak bersetuju 95. Bersetuju 105. The block voting was carried out after more than 15 MPs had stood up earlier and called for a vote. Meanwhile, the Dewan Rakyat also saw the passing of the Finance Ministry section at the committee stage. A second round of voting was called at around 4.30 p.m. after the debate of the Ministry's expenditure. MPs who are currently debating the supply bill will have the opportunity to scrutinize and vote on the government's proposed allocation for each ministry during what is known as the committee stage. Since the Perikatan National Led Alliance took reins in March, each time a block vote is called, a process where every vote is tabulated, it will come under intense scrutiny. This is because Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yassin is believed to command the support of no more than 112 MPs and it would only take a few defections to topple his government. A full list of those who had voted should be available in the Hansard tomorrow morning. The government has denied a claim made by Anwar Ibrahim that a 200 million ringgit allocation in the Prime Minister's department will be used for political contract staff members. Minister in the Prime Minister's department, Rezwan Mat Yusuf, said that a 200 million ringgit allocation for emoluments of contract staff in the Prime Minister's Department will not be used for any political appointments. He said, the contract staff emolument will be allocated for appointment in other agencies under the Prime Minister's Department, including JAKIM, the National Disaster Management Agency, and the Civil Defence Force. Polisi juga ada menyatakan ataupun yang bawa bertanya, emolument kaki al sijab, habiskan yang wajib polisian dulu ya. Emolument kaki tangan kontrak adalah sebanyak 200 juta untuk tahun 2021. Peningkatan 181 juta berbanding tahun sebelumnya. Adakah pelantikan kaki tangan kontrak lantikan politik menggunakan peruntukan ini? Jawapan kami adalah peruntukan elaun kaki tangan kontrak bagi tahun 2021 adalah sebanyak 200 juta itu meningkat 108 juta sahaja. Berbanding tahun 2020, ya, berbanding pada tahun 2020, 91.5 juta. Tiada, ingin dinyatakan di sini, tiada pelantikan kaki, kaki tangan kontrak lantikan politik menggunakan peruntukan ini. Rezwan said this in response to opposition leader Anwar Ibrahim, 
who had questioned the increase of allocations for the Prime Minister's department during the committee stages debate for the Supply Bill 2021 today. Earlier, Anwar had zeroed in on an increase in allocations for what he described to be political appointments by the government and said that it could be used to address those in need during the COVID-19 pandemic. Malaysia continues to report four-digit new COVID-19 cases, with the Klang Valley region contributing the largest chunk. The Health Ministry reported 1,212 new COVID-19 cases as of noon today. Nine of the cases were imported. From the local cases, Selangor reported the highest number of new cases with 402. Health Director General Dr. Nur Hisham Abdullah said 308 of the new cases in Selangor stemmed from existing clusters or close contact screening. Sabah reported the second highest number of cases with 326, followed by Negeri Sembilan with 141 cases and Kuala Lumpur with 119. There were 113 patients in the intensive care unit, three less than yesterday. Three new deaths were also reported, taking the total deaths in the country to 360. One death was recorded in Sabah, one in Labuan, and the other in Kedah. The government may consider proposing an emergency to delay the Gurek and Bugaya by-elections if the constituencies are at risk of COVID-19 transmissions. Minister in the Prime Minister's Department, Takiyuddin Hassan, said that a decision to propose an emergency declaration in Gurek, Perak, and Bugaya Sabah, which are facing upcoming by-elections, would be made after referring the matter to the Health Ministry and the National Security Council. Sebagaimana kita maklum bahawa perkara ini adalah peruntukan di bawah perkara 1501 dibenarkan oleh perlembagaan sekiranya yang Dipertua Agung berpuas hati bahawa sesuatu kawasan ataupun keseluruhan Malaysia ini boleh diisiakan darurat. Ini termasuklah apa yang dibuat dalam uh, proses pilihan raya kecil di Batu Sapi uh, yang Dipertua Agung telah bersetuju untuk mengisiharkan darurat di kawasan pelihara kecil itu menyebabkan ianya tidak perlu diadakan sebagaimana peruntukan undang-undang. Tindakan yang sama dijangka akan diberikan pertimbangan oleh pihak kerajaan jika sekiranya suasana di Parlimen Greek dan juga di Don Bugaya di Sabah uh, mempunyai risiko yang sama apabila kerajaan merujuk kepada Kementerian Kesihatan Malaysia dan juga Majlis Keselamatan Negara. He said this in response to a question by Lembah Pantai MP Fami Fadzil, who had asked whether the government would declare a state of emergency in Gari, Bugaya and Sarawak if the Sarawak State Assembly is dissolved. Takiyudin said the government would consider the matter for Sarawak when the time comes. This came following the postponement of the by-elections in Batu Sapi. On November 18th, the Yandi Pertuang Agong Sultan Abdullah Sultan Ahmad Shah made a proclamation of emergency for Batu Sapi, which allowed for the cancellation and postponement of the by-election there that had been set for December 5th. Last week, the Election Commission had announced that the by-elections for the Great Parliamentary seat and Bugaya State seat would be held simultaneously on January 16th, 2021. It may be called the Macau scam, but most suspected scammers arrested in the country are in fact Malaysians. In the first 10 months this year, Malaysian authorities managed to arrest 993 individuals suspected of being involved in the Macau scam. Deputy Home Minister Jonathan Yasin revealed this in Dewan Rakyat today. And don't let the name of the scam fool you because most of the suspects arrested here are locals. Daripada data, statistik, tangkapan dan pertuduhan kes Macau scam, Tahun 2020 daripada 1 Januari sehingga 31 Oktober 2020 yang berada di dalam negara ini, statistiknya ialah yang melibatkan warga tempatan seramai 912 orang dan warga asing pula yang telah dikenakan tangkap tangkapan adalah seramai 81 orang. Jonathan said the police are closely working with various parties, including the Malaysian Communications and Multimedia Commission, Bank Negara, Telcos and other banking institutions to combat online fraud. Apart from that, he said a cybercrime technical committee comprising the police and MCMC was also established for the same purpose. He added that the police had also set up a special task force to identify and monitor the latest trends in online crime cases. Coming up next, protests continue in Thailand with thousands taking to the streets on Sunday.
Protesters in Thailand targeted the king's royal guards with their latest protest. Thousands of Thai protesters marched to an army barracks on Sunday to challenge Thailand's king Maha Vajira Longkorn's personal control over some army units. It was the latest act of defiance against the king by protesters who had broken taboos by criticizing the monarchy. The Thai constitution says the monarchy must be revered and laws ban insulting the institution. Protesters, many carrying inflatable ducks, which have become a protest mascot, stopped at the gates of the 11th Infantry Regiment, part of the King's Guard that played a role in the suppression of an anti-establishment protest in 2010. Lines of riot police block protesters at the gate. The royal palace has made no comment since protests began, but the king himself said recently that protesters are loved all the same despite their actions. Protesters have accused the monarchy of enabling decades of military domination. Protests began in July and initially demanded the departure of Prime Minister Prayus Chanocha and the new constitution. Demonstrators have expanded their demands since then to include curbs on the powers of the king. The Prime Minister has dismissed demands that he quit and rejected accusations that he engineered last year's elections to retain power after taking office in 2014. Authorities in Argentina are investigating the death of football star Diego Maradona. Argentine justice officials on Sunday seized medical files from the doctor of Diego Maradona as part of their investigation into the recent death of the football star. Maradona died at age 60 on Wednesday after a heart attack, prompting a global outpouring of emotional tributes. The search was requested by prosecutors in the affluent Buenos Aires suburb San Isidro and was signed by a local judge according to a statement from the prosecutor's office. It said that by virtue of evidence that had been collected, it was considered necessary to request searches at the home and office of Maradona's personal physician, Leopoldo Luque. The prosecutor's office provided no information on what prompted the investigation. Maradona's lawyer, Matias Moria, on Thursday, said that he would ask for a full investigation of the circumstances of the football legend's death criticizing what he said was a slow response by emergency services. In a Twitter post, Matthias said that the ambulance took more than half an hour to arrive. On Sunday, Maradona's doctor told a reporter that prosecutors took medical files and stressed that there was no medical error. He added that he was not responsible for the death of the football player. He said a faster ambulance service would not have saved Maradona's life as they would have needed medical equipment at his house including a respirator. And that is all for me today. For more stories, you can go to kinitv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube and Facebook for the latest news updates. I'll be back with more tomorrow, same time, same place. I'm Prasad Michael. Thank you for watching.